Hey everyone, we just hit 5,000 subscribers and since some interest was expressed, I thought I'd give you a shop tour. So this is it. Um, as some of you might remember, I used to be in like half of a two car garage, but then about coming up on four years ago, my girlfriend bought this house that has a detached shop it, and it has worked out really well. We're, uh, let's just say one of the suburbs north of Seattle. I, there's no reason to get more specific than that, but let me show you around. Okay, this is the outer shop. This is where I do all the, the messy stuff, grinding, welding, um, mostly those two things. So along this wall, we have this long bench I whacked together out of two by fours, nothing fancy, um, primarily for breaking down steel metal stock coming in. So it can lie along there and then we'll have the horizontal bandsaw um, at the same height as the bench. So that makes adjusting that really easily. Uh, the sort of usually the first step on most projects is taking something out here, cutting it down to whatever length I have. Um, there's also the gantry crane, which I use on bigger projects quite a bit. Back here in the corner, we have sort of the grinding stations. So the bench grinder, the new belt sander, well, year and a half old at this point, but it still feels new. Uh, the drill sharpener, and then the media blasting cabinet. Next to those usually is my old welding table. It is a little bit small for this shop now, but um, I haven't quite felt the need to replace it really. It is nice that it can be rolled around pretty easily. And then the two MIG welders usually live right next to that. Continuing on over here past the very large fan um, is the air compressor. That was one of the first things I did moving into this shop space. I was so excited to have permanently plumbed air supply and I certainly get my use out of it. However, um, it does cause a noticeable brownout on the circuits when it kicks in. So I usually just leave it off unless I know I'm going to be using it, but it'll hold 50 PSI for quite a while. So that's fine if I'm not if I'm just using it to blow stuff off. Um, the coil of, of pipes is just a, uh, a cooling down section so uh, water can condense out and I got a bit fancy with the loops. Um, next to it here is this yellow flammables cabinet. Um, and there are a lot of flammables in there, but it was kind of one of those things where once I had a big enough shop, like I had to have the yellow flammables cabinet. Um, but it's good to know they're all in there contained. These panels are for an arcade cabinet I'm building for a unfun arcade idea I had that I'm hopefully going to have time and done for open source. And yes, by the way, I will be at open source. That is confirmed. I don't know where they haven't given booth assignments or anything like that. But if you're going there, look for me, say hi. I'd love to talk, um, even though I'm a weird shy introvert at times. But um, I'll be turning on the energy for the crowd, hopefully. So see you there. This is just some old shelving that came with the shop. It's not a very good use of space at all. I need to convert that into a metal rack, storage rack at some point. Um, but so far I haven't done that. And then here we have, over here we have the forging equipment, which doesn't see a lot of use these days, but um, it's still, still convenient to have around. Oh, and in case you're wondering, I filled this slack tub when I moved in here in August of 2020. So that is three and a half years of evaporation. If you ever needed to get a sense of how much evaporation happens, how quickly. I should really refill it. Except that now that it's gotten so low, the top is all loose. So I'd have to be really slow about filling it up so that the wood can reabsorb water and expand and seal in that weird way wood barrels do. Anyway. Um... This thing I've been walking around, which takes up a lot of the space in the shop, is just a cheap Harbor Freight trailer. On top of it is the CS Kalamazoo, which is a railroad style pump car I built for Burning Man in 2010 and 2011. I did actually pump it all the way around Esplanade one year and my arms almost fell off, but it was a pretty fun project. I learned a whole lot making that. And now it's mostly just storage. I'm kind of waiting for the emotional half-life to burn off so I can finally get rid of it. Um, but until then, I haven't quite needed 
that space out here. I haven't done, been doing a project big enough to need that much space out here. So it's okay for now. This is murmuration. Uh, you turn a crank, the birds fly around and flap their wings. I did that for a gallery show in 2018. Um, that will be at open sauce again. It's an easy thing for me to take. Over here, we have the cocktail engine. This uh, was for the Barbot event back in the day in, in the Bay Area. Um, and it makes cocktails. It has 16 different reservoirs. Um, well, no, sorry, 12 reservoirs, 16 channels. Uh, and then this reader here is a punch card reader that I made. And you put a punch card in here. And if you have a hole punched in the right place, it makes an electrical contact, which triggers one of these servos to spin, which opens this valve on the other side of the chain. And it all flows down into a funnel in the middle and then down into your cup. Um, also, I did another one. That was 2013. And then in 2016, I did the assembly line here. Um, similar concept, still gravity feed from these reservoirs on down through valves. But now this is purely mechanical. The only, the only electricity being used is in the electric motor, which turns the Geneva drive. Um, and that turns continuous motion into intermittent rotary motion. So this conveyor belt here moves along in steps. It'll move, stop, move, stop. And then if there's the car, it has a card attached to the, to the conveyor belt. And if there's a tab there, it'll open up the valve or not. And then let that ingredient pour in at that station. Need some more refinement. It never quite got the performance I wanted from it, but um, it was a lot of fun. It's also just really heavy. And so I haven't done a lot with it ever since. But yeah, that's the outer shop, more or less. And really the cool thing here is that, like when I had drawn diagrams of my dream shop, it did this thing of having the separate inner shop and outer shop, because I do a lot of very messy things. Um, but I also like doing machining, which doesn't like mess. So when this came along, it was actually really perfect. Um, oh, yeah, so I just got back from a cross country road trip and one of the things you can do in a cross country road trip is to look for all the stuff that you can buy in some parts of the country and not the others. And this is a big metal roller, but it's specifically one that was designed for doing uh, wagon tires, the metal strip that runs around the outside of a wagon wheel. And it turns out that if you want to buy one of those, you should go to Amish country. So I jumped on this because I've never seen one of these for sale on the West Coast. I'm very happy to have found that. Anyway. Let's go into the inner shop. This is where I spend most of my time, um, if only because it is finished in here and insulated, not heated, but it's still considerably more pleasant in here in the depths of winter. But it's also where sort of, you know, the lathe, the mill is, the fab table where I'm working on most projects. Um, so normally I'm here working and then I'll just dip out to the outer shop to do some welding or grinding or cutting or something. So yeah, stuff, if you watch this channel, you'll have seen a lot. My lathe, uh, 14 by 40 inch import from uh, Precision Matthews. So I've had some questions about this poster and it's an old in-joke among a group of friends. When we were taking an introductory shop course at the University of Washington back in the late 90s, Whereas the shop master had a sort of basic safety spiel and would say things like, you know, don't stick your fingers into the mill, don't lick the lathe, yada, yada, yada. And it became a running in joke with us. So when I moved into this shop four years ago, my wife made this poster for me and it has pride of place by the lathe. And then my knee mill, which is basically the smallest knee mill that I could find at the time because my previous shop was so cramped. Um, I do wish I had a bigger one now. That would be convenient at times, but it hasn't happened yet. Um, the old workbench, which um, I have a small drill press on. I do a lot there. Actually, it's, it's nice to have a smaller thing for more precision and more control over it. And then tap storage and drills and lots of random stuff. Over here is the fab table. There was a video about making this a couple of years ago and with the uh, Wilton Vice, which I also did a video on restoring that when I got it. So this thing is huge and totally overkill, but 
Um, I wanted a big flat solid table in here and it's definitely proved useful many times over. Under it um, are the flat files, which I finally found one last fall um, for keeping old mechanical drawings in. Yeah, all those. Um, it just felt sloppy having them just pile up in the corner. Um, on So yeah, this is where I do a lot of my actual day-to-day -day work is standing here or at the lathe or the mill. And so we got some current projects in work here. Um, I found these um, flip dot seven segment displays on eBay. Unfortunately, I only bought two and now they're not available anymore. Um, I wish I'd bought a bunch because they're really cool. They have no electronics on them. They're just the flip dot display. And the thing is that works by magnets, um, flipping them into a different bi-stable configuration. So I've been working out how to add magnets. Here I've just got them in a board. And so if I move this along, oh, I love that sound. Anyway, I'm hoping to make a random number generator, basically a needlessly fancy set of dice using this idea. Hopefully that video will be out by open source. I definitely will have the thing with me though. I think there's no reason to doubt I can have that done in time. This is the Wolfram device. It's a system I'm working on that will have, so it has these three reader pins down here, which will be spring loaded. And so they can read if there are three holes or not on the previous row, it'll go through this wiffle tree, which is basically a digital to analog converter. And that will move a programming plate back and forth and therefore decide whether or not you can drill down on the next row. And we'll be doing um, Wolfram rule cellular automata drilled into plywood, hopefully. But I need to get back on this project now. You'll, I say that a lot, I know. Here is an old, is a steam engine project that I haven't touched in several years. I need to get back to that. I really need a bigger mill to properly more the build. Uh, bore the cylinder out or do a boring bar on the lathe. And I just haven't, that's the real solution. I just haven't gotten around to doing that. Um, anyway, shop. Um, this greenish cabinet is my metrology cabinet. I have my surface plate on top and then gauge blocks, micrometers, all the more precision stuff that I don't want just sitting out. They're all here in one place. It's, it's nice to know where to go for that. In this corner, we have this lovely uh, metal desk. It was my grandmother's actually. Eventually I hope to get a full computer set up here so I can actually do CAD and update drawings while I'm in the shop. But at the moment it's just a bunch of weird storage. Um, some wood stock and my primary metal stock. This cabinet came with the shop and I've just kind of defaulted to using it. Eventually this is all going to move to the outer shop which is really where it belongs. Uh, but that's just waiting until I get some piece of equipment that needs a space. And until then, eh, this is fine. And it is nice having it all here convenient when I'm working in here, just sort of wander over and find the, uh, the piece I want. These are all sort of tasty chunks, as Adam Savage called them once. Um, and so I can just kind of root through them and find what I need. Um, the vertical bandsaw, which again, there is a video about getting this installed which was quite the hassle because that is much taller than that door over there. Uh, it was fun in the bad way. Well, it was almost very bad. I wouldn't do it again is what I'm saying, but it, got, it worked. Uh, the shaper, which yeah, there's a video about that. Uh, I don't use it a lot, but it is really cool to have. And there are some things it can do that uh, very hard to do any other way. Um, this is the new Arbor Press that also came back from the road trip with me. It is four tons and most importantly, it is ratcheting. That is what I'd really been looking for. This lets you always get the arm into sort of the, the op, into the optimal power position. So you can really put your weight on it and do what you need to do. Um, and then use the hand wheel, to just move the ram up and down independently of the arm and get it where you want. And it's so much nicer to use than my old one. Um, very happy I finally found one. Then we have the, uh, the, uh, the box pan brake um, for bending sheet metal. I don't use it a lot, but um, 
it's, it's pretty nice to have. This is a big old uh, Paramatic drill press. I actually got this a long time ago, like fairly early on in the old shop. But uh, once I got the mill, I stopped using this hardly at all because it was just a bit more inconvenient. And also I hadn't figured out that one of the belts had this flat section ground into it. And that's what was causing the terrible vibrations when I used it. So it's actually really nice now for doing big stuff. I have one of these float lock drill press uh, vices on there, which I really enjoy. Um, if only for nostalgia for my student shop days. Then um, some woodworking equipment, router, little bandsaw, table saw um, from my dad's shop. I don't use it much. The rotary phase converter. And at the moment that just powers the big bandsaw, but I assume eventually I'll own more three phase stuff. So I'm glad it's here and all set up nicely. And then we have the big old Balder uh, grinder polisher, very kindly donated to the shop by uh, Joshua Reich when he had to move shops a couple of years ago. It, uh, it's really useful and it is terrifying, particularly the wire wheel there on the side. There are a lot of tools in here that want to crush or remove my hand or fingers. This thing wants to flense them, right? It wants to just pull it in and just sort of start tearing chunks of flush out. I was very happy when I found the Soviet poster, which I believe roughly translates to remember, this machine does not forgive mistakes. Wise words. So that is the shop as it stands right now in spring of 2024. There isn't any big upgrades planned anytime soon, but you know, it always depends on just what shows up on Craigslist that day. So hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I should have a video soon about the Geochron uh, project, which is all done and just needs to actually get mounted on a wall and then I can make the video. So within the next couple weeks and then hopefully some stuff before open source. And if you're coming there, stop by and say hi. Cheers. It's mostly there for cutting down large stock with the horizontal. <laughs> this is hard. No, where are you going? There you go.